Hi, I'm Steve and welcome to Boosting Your Financial IQ. On this channel, I help people to increase their financial intelligence so they can live better, more abundant financial lives. In this video, I'm gonna show you how an income statement works in just four minutes. So let's jump in. Welcome to the income statement. Let me explain how this works. This is for Home Depot. This is called their Consolidated Statements of Earnings. Don't let this confuse you. It's also referred to as a P&L, Profit and Loss, or Income Statement. All these terms are synonymous, but ultimately it means their income statement, which measures their revenue, their cost, and then ultimately their profit. So let me walk you through these components line by line. First, if you notice, this income statement is expressed in millions of dollars. This is really important to pay attention to. Sometimes it's just in its full amount. Sometimes it's expressed in thousands or millions, but make sure you pay attention to that so you understand the relative terms of the financials. Next, you'll have the columns here, 2023, 2022, and 2021. Most companies have a calendar year meaning that they show their data from January through December through the calendar year. Now, some companies can make a special election to have a fiscal year, and that's what Home Depot has done. So their fiscal year goes from February through January. So you're going to want to make sure you pay attention to that if you want to compare two companies apples to apples over a specific period of time. So here we go. The first line item is net sales. This represents the revenue of the company, the amount of money the company earned by selling its products and services to its customers. The next line item is the cost of those sales, also known as cost of goods sold. These are the costs associated with delivering a product or service to the customer. I don't mean like delivering in a truck, but instead providing that product or service to the end user. These costs may include direct materials, direct labor, subcontractor costs, or other direct costs related to providing those products and services. If you take net sales, also known as revenue, minus cost of sales, also known as cost of revenue or cost of goods sold, you'll end up with gross profit. This is really important to look at because this will help you to determine whether or not a company can make money by delivering products and services to customers before you account for their overhead. The next section includes operating expenses. So usually a company breaks out their selling, general, and administrative expenses, also known as SGNA. These are costs associated with running the business, but they're not directly tied to delivering the product or service. So they may include things such as rent, utilities, overhead salaries, marketing costs, and other expenses related, like I said, to running the business. Then you have depreciation and amortization. So when a company buys property, plant, or equipment, they depreciate it if it's tangible or amortize it if it's intangible over a period of time. And on this line is where this expense shows up. So then you take your SG&A expenses, you add your depreciation and amortization, and you end up with total operating expenses. These are the expenses associated with normal operations of the business, which then gives you operating income. So operating income is gross profit minus your total operating expenses. This is the income that the company earns from normal operations, which I'll get into in just a second, but that's really important to understand. Operating income reflects whether or not a company can make money by selling its products and services to its customers and operate within a certain cost structure in order to make money as an overall company. Then what we need to look at is the income and expenses associated with the business, but they are not directly tied with normal operations. The first line item that we need to look at in this section is interest income. This is the amount of money that the company earns on its cash or other investments. The next line item is interest expense. This is the interest that they pay on their debt. Next, you add these two line items together and you get interest and other net, netted together. Then you have a provision for income taxes. If you deduct the interest and other line item from operating income, you'll end up with earnings before income taxes then the company needs to account for the income taxes that they have to pay as a C-corp in this case. After deducting taxes, you end up with net earnings, also known as the bottom line. This is the net profit that the company earned in the given period. 
I hope you got a lot of value out of that video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you get notified every time I drop a new episode just like this one. Also, there are a ton of great resources on our website at byfiq.com, so make sure you check that out. And finally, if you haven't downloaded our free Boosting Your Financial IQ app, you can find that in the Apple app or Google Play Store. And before you move on, make sure you check out this next video where I talk about how to analyze the income statement. Cheers.